And I'm joined now by Neve Ivrian of the Save the Eighth campaign. Neve, thank you very much indeed for making your way here to Thanks, Donegal for us this evening. Um, OK, first off, your open answer, if you like. Why should a person vote no on Friday? I'm strongly urging people to vote no because of what's in this piece of legislation that Simon Harris is putting forward with the referendum. And he's asking people to vote for abortion on demand. This, make no mistake about it, this is abortion without restriction for the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. And that means that the baby can be aborted for any reason, because she's inconvenient, because she's a twin, because she has a disability. But it goes even further than that. According to 200 legal experts, including two former referendum commissioners and three high court judges, this would establish a wide-ranging right to abortion right up to six months. I think when people imagine what that actually means, it's pretty horrific. It means tearing a child apart limb from limb and dumping their body in the trash right up to the sixth month of pregnancy. I think that goes too far for most Irish people and, and I would urge people to vote no we, to that. We have heard that that is not what the legislation says. It says up to the sixth month it's on the grounds of the life or the health of the mother and the two doctors will have to approve it, that it isn't really opening it up to six months. What would you say to that? Well, I think as the former referendum commissioner has explained, and I think people can actually see this in the heads of Bill, and I would advise people, if they're unsure as to who is telling the truth in this regard, they can Google termination of pregnancy heads of Bill and they'll find the bill for themselves. And they will see spelled out there in black and white that you can have an abortion on vague mental health grounds right up well, to viability. You're saying vague. No, I'm saying that they're, they're, saying unspec they're unspecified in the bill. And I think that's very clear. Okay. The, the, the mental health grounds are not specified. It's about a serious risk to the, to the mental health of the mother, a serious risk of harm. And that is very nebulous and very vague. In Britain, those mental health grounds are used to carry out 97% of the 200,000 abortions that happen there. And I would say this, that most of those abortions, most of those 97% are, are, are being carried out on healthy babies, being carried by healthy mothers. Okay. And people need to Again, I would that. say to you that the, the people on the yes side would say that no, there is, this is a very different regime to what has been introduced in England. But let's talk through some of the key concerns people may have about voting no. First off, in the case of rape, that is the justification given for allowing abortion up to 12 weeks without reason. What would you say to a 14, 18, 28 year old woman who has been raped, finds herself pregnant? Uh, currently, she can't have an abortion here. Mm. Well, they are very difficult cases, and I think everybody wants to do the most compassionate thing possible for a woman in that situation. And I thought it was uh, wonderful, actually, that last week uh, RTE on this programme gave a, a platform to Miss C to make her views known. And people might remember that she was a 13 year old girl when she was raped and became pregnant and was taken by the state for an abortion to England. And she says now that the abortion was harder for her to deal with than the rape. I Furthermore, suppose, Neve, that's, that's one case. Yeah, but what I would you say to the wider issue, well, though, of women I, who I, are raped who I don't want to carry that pregnancy? Can I finish pregnancy? the point, Keelan? She also says that it hurts her and grieves her to see that Simon Harris is using her pain to legalise abortion on demand. I think we need to listen to women like Miss C. I think we also need to realise that this bill is not about legalising abortion on very restrictive grounds. Simon Harris could have done that. He chose not to do that. According to legal experts, he could have done it. But okay. he didn't want to. He wanted to legalise abortion on very broad grounds. But, Nick, can I bring you back to that question I asked you? What do you say to a woman who is raped, is pregnant mm -hmm. and doesn't want to carry it to term? Do you believe that doesn't matter. She has to carry it to term. Well, I think they're very difficult circumstances. Yes. And I think we need to listen to women who have been in that situation. I think very often we all make the presumption that abortion is the solution to these hard cases. And I think that's what Simon Harris has done. So you're every, saying, yes, she should carry I, it to term. I think that every circumstance that is put before Simon Harris, he seems to think abortion is a solution. If the baby is sick, he thinks abortion is a solution. If a woman is in crisis, he thinks that abortion is a solution. If a woman wants an abortion for because she has, hasn't got money, because there are difficulties in her, in her life, he thinks abortion is a solution. Okay. He needs to be bolder and braver than that and offer women real solutions when they have a crisis in Okay, pregnancy. well Simon Harris would say, has said, that you haven't put forward other solutions to these hard cases. And I would point out, Neve, you haven't actually answered that question as to whether or not you believe a woman who has been raped, doesn't want to be pregnant, needs to continue that pregnancy. Well, I think I have answered that question. And I think abortion is very often a failure to provide women with the supports that they need. And I think this bill is another example of the government's failure to support okay. and help women. I would point to the fact that Simon Harris has still not restored funding to rape crisis centres. He has not provided adequate support Can to single parent families. Can I bring you back to, to what we're voting think, on, think, on Friday? I know, but I think if we look at the government's track record in relation to supporting women, and his, his claims that this bill is, is required to help women rings hollow to me and to okay. many other people. And if I bring you back now, mm -hmm. the very fundamental question here for the No mm -hmm. campaign is if a woman, for whatever reason, decides she does not want to continue with her pregnancy, why should a law be able to override her body integrity and force her to go through with that. 
Well, I think there are a couple of things there. The first thing is that it's very, I think it's been great in the last few weeks to be reassured by so many doctors that this is not about maternal safety, that women can get any life-saving treatments they need in pregnancy and under, under the Eighth Amendment. I think that's very reassuring for women. It's like Ireland is a very safe place for women to be pregnant. When we talk about bodily integrity, I absolutely understand that's important. And I'm one of five sisters. I have four daughters. I think it's important that women have choices and that they have bodily integrity. This is not about that. This is about taking away the right to life of vulnerable and defenceless human beings. And if we remove the Eighth Amendment, all pre-born children, not just children in crisis, but every single pre-born child in this country has absolutely no right to life whatsoever anymore. That opens up an appalling vista of late-term abortion, abortion on demand, the kind of scenario okay. we see in Britain. Okay. I think people Niamh, need to vote no to I'm that. I'm going to have to wrap you here now, but thank you very much indeed for joining us Thanks, this evening.